Tell me a fact, and I learn. Tell me the truth, and I believe. But tell me a story, and it will live in my heart forever. I doubt that uh, this uh, screencast will uh, stick with you uh, that long, but um, I hope uh, you bear with me in the next, let's say, um, ten, 10 minutes or so, and I talk you through my uh, annotated uh, bibliography uh, for uh, the um, PGDLT uh, course um, e-learning uh, of Lisa Donaldson. Um, I hope, uh, Lisa, you listen uh, as well. So uh, let's uh, jump right uh, right into it. Um, yeah, task was um, to create this annotated uh, bibliography, two pieces, uh, one peer-reviewed paper, one website, getting uh, the main points together, at least from my uh, perspective, um, and uh, which are relevant to me, and then to indicate and or maybe uh, it's better to say to reflect on, on the impact these papers or these resources had uh, on my, uh, my learning, my study, and maybe also uh, already on, on my teaching. Yeah, so here we go. Um, yeah, don't get too excited. I won't uh, um, over-deliver. Um, again, it's about one paper and one website. The, um, the paper you see here uh, to the left, the, the website to the right. I just uh, in, inserted also in um, uh, a paper uh, about in, um, intercultural business communication because that's where I'm coming from. Uh, that's the teaching background I'm coming from and there it's very important um, to talk about um, reflection or to think about reflection about uh, self-knowledge about uh, um, individual cultural identity and there is also a high emphasis on critical thinking on uh, awareness and that's all uh, aspects of uh, transformation and that's the reason why um, this um, this article uh, resonated with me um, very much. So let's uh, um, have a look at it. It's called um, Teaching for Transformation and is from Patricia uh, Cranton. It's very, um, very fairly recently from 2002. And um, here, by the way, there is the the reference to it. And it talks about uh, transformative learning uh, theory. Yeah, what is that? Or what is that process of, of, um, of transformation? It's, uh, it's basically a process within you as a learner, within you as a, as a human being, as a thinking being. And it usually starts with, with an event or uh, a challenge. That challenge could be a question or it could be a, a traumatic event like losing a job or even losing a friend or a close relative. And that usually uh, uh, raises our awareness or can lead to our awareness where um, we might um, think that uh, we have limited views or uh, distorted conceptions of what about the surrounding uh, world and uh, then we we might reflect on it and obviously there's a, um, a kind of openness or aspect of openness about it to consider alternatives and then it, uh, it leads to to the last uh, phase uh, here where uh, on the right um, where it's uh, change is, uh, is about to to uh, to come in and we we have new meaning, or we constructed a new meaning to uh, to the world around us, and to also uh, to to our behavior, and that influences our behavior, obviously. But that that whole process um, is not so much uh, um, incremental in terms of that um, any every traumatic event must lead in the end to change. It doesn't. 
Um, Grantin uh, talks about transformation and the importance of transformation because trans transformation is the, the basis of every deep learning, uh, so to speak. So um, what is um, the result of critical thinking, of, of every higher order uh, thinking skills? Um, when something new, new learning appears, that is part of trans uh, of a transformative uh, process, and um, that uh, needs an environment of challenge, support, and empowerment. And but it can't be uh, prescribed. So even when you have the 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 right setup, the right environment, it may or may not appear. And um, there's no uh, no special method to it, so um, the the magic key. Um, and uh, talking about talking about the magic key, um, um, when facing the our audience, t um, so teachers, you may um, so audience like uh, adult learners or, or pupils, then um, I'm. I am, and that's what she describes uh, very often. Um, uh, confronted with with the fact that uh, for from a learner's perspective is is much much easier and safer to maintain a, a, uh, um, maintain the same habits of mind instead of changing them and uh, obviously that uh, goes uh, exactly uh, uh, the opposite direction of of transformation um, and also um, the aspect of adult learners that they learn just what they want to learn and learn uh, only what is relevant to them or they at least think is relevant to them and um, that we all need to um, um, consider to act on on new uh, findings or new on on revisions of 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 the meaning we uh, we have, and um, that was an interesting aspect. I f I thought um, that this acting, so this rehearsal on on uh, revisions, doesn't have to be in class. We always think about teaching in a set environment, um, in a defined uh, environment, but uh, maybe it should be out of class, and maybe we we kind of. Giving a task to uh, to students, but um, it happens out of class. Just an interesting thought. Thought, uh, um, I reckon. Yeah, these are all the the um, the aspects surrounding transformation of meaning, openness, own uh, own their own way of doing things, uh, uh, awareness, self-reflection, critical thinking. And then uh, Creighton uh, talks in her paper really uh, from a practitioner point of view uh, addressing uh, um, practitioners and so she talks about strategies and one strategy could be storytelling and in, in her uh, from her slant it uh, she thinks about she thinks about uh, autobiographies um, so narratives in the first uh, told in the first person uh, but it can be actually every every story so that's that's her paper and um um the main the, the the main bits i i took from for my own um for my own learning um and um also uh, i think for my own own teaching already and then there there's a website and this website um is uh from uh, mr robin um, he's a PhD at uh, Houston University, and this website is basically um, an instructional resource for teachers, but also um, for students. And there are lots, lots of information uh, on there. It's very, um, very resourceful. Um, just to talk you through, uh, for example, here. Um, um, story design. It talks about story design. So everyone who wants to craft a narrative, or wants to present a narrative to others, or uh, wants to explain others how to craft a narrative, should look at this. Or 
uh, example, story examples, obviously, um, digital story examples, and um, also discussion about assessment. How how um, can uh, digital storytelling be assessed? Very important part as well. And there are more templates, lesson plans, and um, also a bit bit of theory uh, around around it. So everything you need really to uh, implement digital storytelling in your teaching. Yeah, what did all this with me? Um, that's the reflection part. So what's the impact uh, for my own uh, uh, learning and, and 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 my own studying? Um, yeah, there's this this aspect of of transformation, and uh, it reminded me again um, that uh, learners need challenge, uh, support, and empowerment, and that teachers really should ask um, learners for self-reflection, critical thinking, awareness, openness, and making meaning. But they have to find the right questions. To um, to actually trigger all these higher order thinking skills, and that uh, uh, was for me and for me important because that uh, was a bit of a motivation to find out more about uh, uh, about the question how a change can be facilitated, um, so change or transformation, and how change becomes sustainable. And obviously, there's the magic of storytelling that's always very uh, very appealing, and we all know that from our own teaching. But uh, digital storytelling, and that where the website comes in, uh, is also a, a challenge. The technology is a challenge, not only for students, but uh, also for teachers. Um, by the way, the, the website is not dwelling on that so much, but... Um, uh, it is it's still a very good instructional resource uh, as such. And digital storytelling um, is has a high potential for unearthing cultural identity and self knowledge. And that's where where I'm concerned with intercultural communication when we use narratives, so stories told in the first person. And um that that itself was a was a good you know good thing to to understand and to to think about it and it made me curious which tools like cool tools might be out there to target this cultural identity uh um to f of of participants and to um to activate uh, their self knowledge and yeah, and then there. Uh, last but not least, there's obviously the aspect of uh, cultural identity, and uh, that it's always easier um, to to recognize differences in others than um, uh, defining our own uh, cultural identity. And um, there are challenges with it. Um, I'm I'm teaching very much. Uh, Oh, exclusively to adults, and they they come with their own beliefs, with their own assumptions, with their own conceptions, and sometimes it's very hard to deal with that in teaching. Even though I was asking for it in in one method or the other, um, it it's it's a challenge in teaching um, to uh, to actually then come come from 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 that challenge and from the awareness to the reflection. And to the critical thinking, and um, and then is that there's another aspect of challenge where um, uh, where it is challenging to find the right questions, um, find uh, um, the right stories to engage the audience uh, into in, into that um, in, in that in, into that reflection. For themselves and um, to find their their or to find their 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 knowledge about themselves. Yeah, and that uh, brings us, I suppose, to to the big picture again and to the end of this um, 
this lovely uh, screencast. I hope it wasn't too exhausting for you. It was uh, certainly exhausting for me because um, I was sitting here.